My name is Tofliš Dorok, and uh, it is my pleasure to present a paper uh, written together with Wojciech Jamroga and Wojciech Fenczek. In order to be able to discuss uh, semantic side effects, I will begin by providing some necessary context and introduce our previous work and our formalisms, after which we'll move on to the main part of the presentation. Finally, we'll discuss the effect uh, our changes to semantics have on model reduction and conclude. So <clears throat> let's begin. Typically, uh, reasoning of strategic ability has been done in inherently synchronous settings, uh, for example, of concurrent game systems. However, we have proposed uh, an asynchronous semantic for strategic ability, and our formal model is called asynchronous multi-agent systems, or AMAS for short. Essentially, an AMAS is a network of automata. The key takeaway here is that we have shared transitions that serve as a means of synchronization between agents. And such transitions have to be jointly executed by all agents who have them in their local automata. Now, this network of automata, this AMS, generates uh, an interleaved interpreted system. Due to lack of time, I'm not able to go into the details, so I'll just say that interleaved systems follow the model introduction of distributed systems, and it's uh, rather straightforward. We have global states that are tables of local states, Transitions that follow from those defined in local automata, each agent is uh, has a defined protocol function called um, the repertoire of choices, which determines which events are available to them in, in, in which state. And of course, we add some uh, Boolean variables uh, and their evaluation over global states. Now, a major problem uh, is, of course, state explosion, particularly so in an asynchronous setting. So we employ partial order reduction to generate on the fly from the AMS a reduced model. As you can see, even in such a small scale example, the reduction can be quite significant. We'll return to reductions at some point of the presentation. Now, uh, we use a subset of ATL star to specify our properties. And more specifically, we exclude the nested strategic operators. We call the subset simple ATL star. Another restriction is that uh, due to uh, the use of partial order reductions, we have to exclude the next step operator x. So ultimately, our syntax is as follows, which means that uh, we basically have the strategic operator, which denotes that um, an agent or a coalition of agents have a strategy to achieve some goal, followed by what is essentially an LTL formula, because there's no nesting. And some example properties of this GTC system uh, that can be ex uh, expressed in this language are as follows. For example, the controller can keep the train out of the tunnel. Now. As for semantics, so first of all, strategies can be seen as conditional plans of agents. And in this work, we consider only a single type of strategies, namely those with incomplete information and imperfect recall of agents. So formally, such a strategy is a function that assigns to each local state of an agent a single event from the repertoire to be executed. And so we have that an ATL formula is satisfied if Agents have a joint strategy. Joint strategy is a tuple of strategies, one for each agent, such that for each path in the outcome set of a strategy, the outcome set consists of all paths that are consistent with a strategy that is paths that can occur when agents follow a strategy while a position just follows their protocols and freely choose from them. If for each path in the outcome set, we have that this inner goal and LTL formula is satisfied. So. In a nutshell, our main technical result of the previous paper was that we were, we were able to adapt uh, model reductions defined for LTL to this new setting of strategic ability. And it was a rare case of free lunch in the sense that um, we kept the computation and complexity, we kept the efficiency of reduction of the method for LTL, but at the same time, we're able to have a more expressive uh, language and we were able to use existing algorithms and tools in this new setting, for example, the spin model checker. However, there is a but. Somewhat uh, accidentally, we realized while working on a follow-up paper that there are certain semantical problems uh, with a model uh, that at a high level can be attributed uh, due to taking this uh, existing modeling machinery inherited uh, from distributed systems and adding a new layer of strategic reasoning on top of that. These side effects that include counterintuitive interpretation of formulas I'm going to show on a running example. 
a timely one. I'd like to wish for all of us that it becomes obsolete as soon as possible. We have uh, the organization of a conference and the highlighted strategy of the general chair and the organizing committee chair who have, as you can see, miscoordinated on their strategy. One of them wants an online event, the other wants to hold the conference on site. So in the resulting model, we can see also in red the uh, transitions their strategy enables. Um, so uh, clearly the full model has no deadlock states, however, because we have the additional layer of strategic reasoning problem uh, arises in the fact that some strategies can still produce deadlocks in particular this strategy only produces a single path that is infinite. Now, for a number of reasons, one of which is the fact we want to use partial order reductions, which have been defined for infinite paths only. We disregard the finite paths in our semantics, which leads to counterintuitive uh, properties uh, holding in our system. For example, in this case, uh, these two agents have a strategy such that the conference is never open despite this state where uh, the Proposition open holds is clearly enabled. This is, of course, the result of this path being finite and so disregarded in the outcome path of uh, the strategy of this coalition. Now, in fact, we could take this example even further. Strategy can theoretically produce only finite ramps. In that case, the outcome is then empty, and this leads to even more counterintuitive properties holding in a system. So this is, of course, a problem. And uh, we use a fairly standard solution to mitigate that. Namely, we introduce um, silent epsilon transitions that will account for this particular uh, possibility for miscoordination between agents. And we redefine outcome sets accordingly so that they are taken whenever agents miscoordinate, agents in a coalition. So practically, what this amounts to is to adding uh, these epsilon loops to all local states of coalition agents. As a result, we obtain uh, such a model from the AMS. Clearly, uh, the path we were discussing earlier is now no longer finite. Each, uh, each such path is uh, effectively appended with an infinite uh, epsilon suffix, so can now be considered in the outcome sets. And the previously uh, holding property is no longer true under our new semantics, as it should be. Now. Uh, the issue with uh, deadlocks raises an interesting uh, question of uh, whether agents outside of the coalition should be able to completely freely choose from the repertoire. In particular, should they be able to deliberately choose options that uh, block um, the system uh, from being uh, further executed, such as, for instance, agent SC could choose give up here, leading to a state where neither of the two coalition agents can do anything anymore. Uh, of course, this may be desirable, but there's now obvious downside in that uh, we may be able to only verify uh, simple uh, safety goals as a result and not reachability. So uh, on the other hand, like I said, it may still be desirable to model such a situation. So our proposal is to make it uh, an explicit condition, uh, something similar to concurrency fairness. Uh, as a result, this will allow us to will explicitly adopt or reject this in, in the model, depending on our needs, about our intuition about the model and the reality we're trying to convey. Uh, let's go back to, to our example. This is exactly, exactly the same one. Uh, I just uh, removed the highlight because we'll be considering different agents and uh, local states. So let's take a look at uh, this global state. Um, here we have that the general chair can ensure no epidemic uh, risk. This is true because he can opt for an online event. Uh, we will find ourselves in this global state as a result. This is a shared transition with uh, OC. As I said, they need to be executed jointly. OC will have to synchronize, so we avoid uh, the risk. However, the opposite property is also true in this uh, case because we may have an execution. We're in a synchronous semantics, so we have con to consider all of them that uh, the OC acts first and chooses uh, on site, in which case it is GC that has to synchronize uh, with the organizing chair. And then we have the risk of epidemic. So this is a problem uh, that does not occur in purely temporal settings uh, where we do not have this uh, asymmetry where an agent may be proactive or reactive depending on a particular model. 
we do not have currently the specification for, for such a case. So in order to mitigate that, we need some way to model this extent of agent's choice. And um, to allow uh, for that, we propose to modify the repertoire of choice uh, for agents. So that instead of uh, simply listing um, available events, subsets are now listed. And in a case uh, where a subset contains more than one event, this will model exactly the situation we're talking about where an agent, for instance, the organizing chair who defers to the uh, decision of the general chair has no firmer control over which of these uh, will be selected, whereas the other agent has uh, full choice, active choice as before. Now, the main technical result of our paper is actually the non-trivial proof that the aforementioned uh, partial order reduction method, which we previously adapted from LTL to this uh, simple ATL star, still holds in our updated AMS semantics. It is also true uh, under this uh, uh, proposed condition of opponent reactivity, where we restrict the outcome sets to only paths where uh, opponents cannot uh, deliberately block uh, the execution of the system. Uh, we uh, created some uh, <clears throat> benchmarks uh, modeled in, um, in a uh, pin model checker in its uh, input language Pramala. Uh, these are trade grid controller, the example shown before, as well as a simple voting model. As you can see, uh, the reduction is very significant. This is, of course, a best case scenario. The important thing here is that our additions in the form of epsilon transitions do not uh, affect its efficiency in any way. In a more realistic scenario, uh, <clears throat> reduction is no longer exponential. However, it uh, is still significant. Furthermore, it increases with the number of agents in the system. And as before, the invisible uh, with respect uh, to our uh, reduction scheme, uh, epsilon transitions do not hamper its efficiency. So in summary, we have um, identified some paradoxical or counterintuitive interpretations of strategic properties. We, we needed to ask ourselves a question if uh, the property we think we're verifying is indeed the one being verified. Ultimately, this, this was due to the uh, modeling system which inherited uh, uh, modeling machinery meant mainly for temporal properties. However, we were able to mitigate these issues by updating the semantics in a way that, first of all, most importantly, avoided these pitfalls, but also, no less importantly, did drastically change the semantics. As a result, we were able to still use the partial order reduction algorithm, which allows for significant reductions. Furthermore, we also explicitly introduced um, a uh, fairness style condition called opponent reactivity, which allows us to also proactively mitigate a potential problem while also uh, allowing for more flexibility in, in uh, modeling. As for a perspective for the future, uh, in the nearest future, we plan to publish formal results uh, for the case of perfect recall strategies in which we conjecture everything should also be applicable. The case for uh, uh, perfect information uh, it is, uh, it is not possible, uh, reductions not work uh, in this case, as we have already shown in the previous paper. As for a more uh, distant perspectives, uh, we can of course consider uh, reductions in the settings of a more expressive logic, for instance, strategy logic that Magda already talked about. Uh, we can also define symbolic uh, reduction methods, first for ATL, then maybe for strategy logic as well. And uh, finally, another avenue could be to investigate various extensions of our AMS formalism, for instance, uh, to time systems or with, uh, for parametric verification. In fact, we already have one such extension in the setting of attack defense trees where we translated this formalism to AMS, which then had to be extended with various attributes inherent to the attack defense tree formalism. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.